Hello everybody and welcome back to Ours Trains. My name is Corey and in today's video we are going to be doing the random train challenge. This is the most fun thing, like fun challenge I have ever done. And I think after you're done watching this video here, you're gonna see how much fun it is. I really hope that this challenge here spreads through the model railroading community of YouTube and across all scales like wildfire because this is so much fun and it doesn't matter how big or how small of a collection you have, no matter what, it is still a lot of fun regardless. So you might ask, Corey, what is the random train challenge. So before we get into how the challenge works, I really quickly want to give a shout out and explain how I found this. Well, I was going through my subscription feed, which is very, very big, and one of my followers to my YouTube channel, David's Trains and Legos, I saw a video a few days ago that he put out called the random train challenge. And I'm like, what's this? I've never heard of this before. So I watched the video and I loved it. It was so cool. How it works is David, what he would do was he would separate his collection into two spinner wheels on his mobile phone. One spinner wheel would have the locomotives that he would spin and whatever it landed on would be the locomotive he chose. And the next wheel would practically be everything else in his collection. So rolling stock, cabis, uh, passenger cars and all that stuff. So he would spin that other wheel and he would get a good lengthy train going of very random cars. So I love the video idea. I'm like, you know, I want to try it out on my own case and do a video on it and see if there's any other big model railroaders who can maybe try this challenge out because I really, really want to see it go everywhere. It is so much fun. So anyways, if you go check out that video, I'll link it in the description below so you can see how it all starts and make sure to subscribe to David as well because it's a great idea. But anyways, let's explain how the challenger work in today's video here and how I'm gonna kind of twist it. Essentially, you're gonna be splitting your train collection into two categories. Number one is going to be locomotives, and then number two is gonna be everything else. So how it works under locomotives is where you'll put your powered locomotives, and on the other list is where you'll put everything else, like your freight cars, your passenger cars, your mini cabooses, your miscellaneous cars, maybe like work cranes or whatever. And then this is where you'll also put your dummies. So if you have any dummy units in your collection, unpowered locomotives, that's where they're gonna go as well. It kind of depends how you play this game because it has to be a blind selection. Whether that be putting everything onto a spinner wheel and spinning it and whatever it lands on, lands on. Or what I did in my case was I literally wrote down on Google Docs every single thing I had and I cut the pieces of papers out and I put them in two conductor hats. The conductor hat with the gold uh, gold bands around the head is the locomotives and the old DNH conductor's hat is where everything else goes. How do the rules go in my way? Your train can only have one powered locomotive. I wouldn't put, unless if you want to play it and twist it your own way where you put everything in one hat, no matter what you pick is what you get. In my case, since I don't have, since a lot of these conventional locomotives don't have a front coupler and or just can't really run together like a command control train or something. I only have one locomotive per train but then how it works is I have to keep choosing out of the everything else hat until I either get a caboose or I get an observation car. So generally speaking within the first three freight cars I pull out if I get a caboose or an observation car, whatever that I know is going to end the train right there and then, since it doesn't have a coupler on the other side, I throw it back into the hat and keep going. So the train can't be a short little one and that's where it makes it fun because then you get a lot higher odds of making your train a lot more random. So anyways, now that you see how the challenge works, let's get into today's video. And we got... Ah, my 1656, sorry. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so for those who don't know the 1656, that is my Lionel post-war 040 switcher. So already, it ain't gonna be able to pull that much, but it'll have a little ringing bell. So we have the first one is my New York Central Hudson boxcar. Show it off to you right there. So that is a new, it was a modern era a semi-scale Lionel box card that has a little New York Central Hudson inside. I don't know what the scale of the Hudson is, but it's a comical one. Next one we have is 
Ah, uh, no, I'm not going to include... No, yeah, I can. Yeah, I can. So this is a Pennsylvania Railroad work car. I thought... I, w I was thinking like a work tender, a crane tender. I was like, oh, no, I can't have that. And I was like, wait, I don't even have a Pennsylvania Railroad crane tender. So let's see. Next one is the work crane flat car. Let's see. This one, we have a Virginian box car right here. All right, we have a my Baltimore and Ohio blue box car. I have, I believe, two or three BNO ones, so this kind of helps tell them all apart. Let's see the next one. <laughs> we have my New Haven F3 dummy. This is going to go terrible. <laughs> all right. Ah, oh, next one is a submarine flat car. So it's any of the submarine flat cars. We have my post-war Atkinson, Topeka, and Santa Fe. I really lie in all lines, but I put it as ATSF coach. Ouch. This thing is not going to be able to pull this. We got a Frisco box car. <laughs> all right, next one we have my New Haven, or no, for Western MPC coach. <laughs> no! We have the post-war state of Maine boxcar. A heavy one because it's the little operating one. No! Norfolk and... <laughs> we have a Norfolk and Western scale baggage car. Please make it end! Oh, New York Central baggage. Oh, see this is what's fun when you put everything else. Alright, next one. Finally we got my MPC Norfolk and Western caboose. Holy moly, well, that's, I don't think, I don't know if it's gonna get much better than that, well. This is the most silly, cursed, whatever you'd like to put in here. But I do not think that this train, this little locomotive, is going to be able to pull all of these cars and dummy. <laughs> it's get, it gets so funny the further back you go. Oh, you're not supposed to be open. I will be shocked if it can even move an inch. So let's see if it can do just that. We're going to see if the little 1656 can manage to pull any of this. So what do you think? Do you think it's going to be able to pull it? Do you not? I'm leaning towards the not side, but... Let's see how good she does. All right, little buddy. All right, I wish she had a whistle. Let's pretend that was it. Come on. No, come on. I think I can, oh, uh, it's, 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 it's kind of moving. You gotta do it just right. I swear, uh, I think it's probably the slack just pulling out. Well, I don't know about you, but I still want to see this really cursed train being pulled around the layout. So I'm going to find a locomotive that can take the, the immense weight, and we'll see how good it does. All right, so we have for the first time ever, I think in modern ours trains history, a post-war doubleheader. We got the 681 turbine and 1656-040 behind it. I don't know if these two are going to be able to pull this train, but there's only one way to find out. Uh, and I'm going to get my phone ready because I want some second-hand footage. Here we go. Uh, Come on! Yes! Yes! Go! Do you hear that? I hear the bells of success. 
Although her train uncoupled in the middle, it still went a few laps around the layout successfully. So although the 1656 needed a little help, I would call that a successful run. <laughs> All right, that is that. Again, I had such a ball filming this. It was so much fun. I'm really going to want to try and do this more maybe on my Sunday run day streams at the very end or something fun like that for a special occasion. But yeah, thank you all for watching. If you liked today's video, make sure to smash that like button down below. And if you're new to my YouTube channel as well, make sure to click that red subscribe button as well. But otherwise that, thank you all for watching. Again, go check out the video. I got inspired by David's video down in the comment section below and subscribe to him as well while you're at it. But yeah, thank you all for watching. I'll see you all in the next video slash live stream slash whatever I do. So stay tuned and bye-bye.